Now let's talk about the bevel edged socket chisels. Chisels are one of the most common tools used in woodworking shops. They're used to make a variety of joinery, from rough chopping of the joints to fine pairing to fit. We'll talk about the advantage that the socket design has over the more common tang design. We'll look at the available sizes and also some different ways that you can use these tools. So let's get started. We can see here that the edges of the chisel are ground parallel all the way down the length of the chisel. The edges of our chisel are also beveled down with a small flat of about 20 thousandths of an inch on the end. This gives the cutting edge some extra stability, but yet still remains small enough that the corner of the cutting edge can get into some nice tight spaces. The cutting edge of the chisel is ground square to the sides, and the backs are also ground flat and hand finished at 400 grit. Having a flat back on your chisel is very important for pairing operations which we'll discuss when we talk about techniques. Now let's take a look at the socket design. One of the advantages of the socket design is that you can easily replace this handle. So if this handle were to become damaged, or if you simply want to use another handle for the type of work that you're doing, it's a quick replacement. You'll often see a tang style of chisel. These chisels have a metal spike, which goes into a wooden handle, often with a metal ferrule to keep the handle from splitting. The disadvantage of the tang style is that if this handle were to become damaged, it would be difficult to replace, and it's impossible to do a quick handle change for your work. Another advantage of the socket design is that we can have a slight offset. As you can see, from the back of the chisel, the socket is actually angled back slightly. This will allow you, for pairing operations, to put more of the back of the chisel as a reference against your work without that socket getting into the way. In order to remove the socket handle, all we need to do is to take the side of the handle and tap it against the workbench. And out it comes. In order to reseat this, simply set the handle into place, grasp the chisel down near the socket. You don't want to grab the chisel near the end because you might run the risk of cutting yourself. Grab it down by the socket and simply wrap it against the top of the workbench. Sometimes you may need to reseat these handles due to seasonal changes in the wood. If you'd like a more permanent bond with your handle, go ahead and use a flexible epoxy to glue them in. But if you do so, realize that you're going to lose the ability for those quick handle changes. Our handles are made out of hornbeam. We've got our standard handle here and the longer pairing sides available here. Now let's take a look at how to use these chisels. There are two main operations that can be done with these chisels, chopping and paring. Now to start, let's pick up our 3 quarter inch chisel. Now you'll note that when I pick these up, I'm always picking them up by the socket and never just picking them up by the handle. In case the handle is loose, if I pick it up with the handle, the chisel could fall and potentially damage the cutting edge. So we've got our 3 quarter inch chisel here. Let's take a look at the chopping operation. Chopping is the act of taking the chisel and driving it into the wood with a mallet or hammer. Paring is the operation of slicing away small amounts of wood, either with the back down as a reference, or with the back up and the bevel down. Now right here I've got a half blind pin board for dovetails that we can use to demonstrate both of these operations. To start, I'm going to go ahead and take my chisel and set it into the gauge line that I've struck across. I'm doing this at 90 degrees so I can make sure that my chisel is straight up and down to that gauge line. I'm going to use my mallet to go ahead and strike just lightly, just to deepen up that gauge line. I can then come in and pare away a little bit of this waste wood. Now because I don't want to take away too much wood, I'm actually coming in and paring with the bevel down because paring bevel down when you're paring inward is much less aggressive than paring with the bevel up coming inward. So I'm going to come in and pair bevel down just up to that gauge line. I can come back in and chop down again. And now that I've got a little bit of a shoulder, I can be a little more aggressive with the mallet. Now 
And because I've got a little bit more extra room here, I can go ahead and pare down with the bevel up and be a little more aggressive in the wood I'm taking off. The larger the shoulder, the more aggressive I can be with the mallet. If I come into a new gauge line, where I don't have a very large shoulder, and I'm very aggressive with the mallet, what can happen is I've got a wedging action with this chisel where I can push back past my gauge line. So for accurate joinery, be very, very light until you've got a nice shoulder to brace against. Because I've got a nice deep chop line, I can come in, bevel up, and take off a good chunk of wood as I'm paring. Now as you can see here, I've come in quite a ways and I've got a significant amount of waste wood here. So I can pare straight across and start removing this waste wood here. I can use my mallet to help out with that. With very light taps, I can start removing this waste wood up near the end of the board. As you can see, as this pin gets further down, we're getting wider and wider, so that the wood that we're removing ends up becoming wider than this opening on the top. So starting about here, what I'm actually going to do is to come in and chop down along the middle. This will help break this wood up into smaller pieces so that it fits out of the pin easily as I'm removing it without damaging these edges. Now with this, I've got a slightly smaller chisel with a longer paring handle. I can use this to come in and pare out these corners and work my way in back and forth without having to worry too much about that full width of the chisel interfering. You can see here that the longer chisel handle helps me with control when I'm paring. As you can see, I'm now using these chisels to pair end grain. For the waste in the tailboard here, we can use those same chopping and paring operations that we used on the half blind pins to remove this waste in between the tails. For the shoulders, what I've gone ahead and done is paired a little bit of a shoulder around the three edges of the end and then use my dovetail saw to remove the bulk of the waste. I can then come through with my chisel and go ahead and pare away that end grain, leaving a nice flat shoulder. With this paring chisel, I'm using the paring handle because I'm not going to be hitting the end with mallet. The length of the paring handle allows me to get a little bit better control by pointing my index finger forward and then using my left hand to guide the chisel edge. My right hand is going to be pushing the chisel forward and providing the power in the stroke. I've got a little more end grain here than I can take off with one pass, so I'm going to go ahead and just trim down the end grain lightly until I can get it all in one pass, and then I'll use the shoulder to reference the back of the chisel against. Here's one shoulder done. Now I've still got a lot more work to do with this joint, but when you're done with your chisels, at the end of the day, 
go ahead and wipe them down with a light coat of camellia oil before you put them away. This will help prevent rust from forming on your chisels. You can either store your chisels in a tool roll or hang them up. If you do hang them, always remember to hang them by the sockets and not by the handles. For more information on using chisels, take a look at David Charlesworth's videos Precision Preparation of Chisels for Accurate Joinery and Chisel Techniques for Precision Joinery, which will cover using chisels on many more joints than we've been able to show you here. Always remember that while a sharp chisel may be dangerous, a dull chisel is even more so. Always keep your chisels sharp and they'll continue to perform well for you. <music>